morning, Facebook. Um, haven't done one of these live broadcasts for a little while, but I figured today was a good one. Um, the other day, two days ago, news broke that um, Sandals will be closing down possibly for five months into the high season, um, December and January included. And um, I was on the Observer Radio that day. I called in the Observer Radio because they were talking about diplomatic passports or something. And I said, look, this is a Category 5 hurricane that's just hit us. And, you know, we need to have more information. Because up until that point, there wasn't really much information about, about why they were closing or, or, or anything else. And from a public relations standpoint, it has been a disaster, uh, like a Category 5 hurricane. And that disaster is still ongoing. Um, there's, there's an horrible amount of spin and rumors and... I mean, the amount of stuff I've seen on Facebook over the last couple of days is it's just mind-boggling what people are saying. You know, we, we already have the white master, you know, keeping down the black people. We already have that. I'm like, but guys, let's, let's try and see past that kind of base emotion and, and figure out what's going on here. Thankfully, the Prime Minister of Antigua and Barbuda has... I mean, despite what the media has done to sort of uh, sexy up his, or, or to change his, his statement, Prime Minister Gaston Brown's statement, I felt, was, was quite measured and, and quite optimistic in, you know, saying that things are going to be all right, we're going to try and get, to get you know, make, make the situation better. But the other stuff has been pretty vitriolic, and I think that, you know, we have to look at Antigua and Barbuda and realize that we have some serious chronic problems that we've had here for a long time, which, whenever situations like this come up, we ignore those problems and start attacking the messenger, you know? And there's absolutely no doubt that the Sandals group of companies are cutthroat. They are cutthroat. They, they, they are... They're trying to make a profit no matter what. And, you know, they are very, 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 very competitive. And when they negotiate, they, they don't play around, you know. Um, there's no doubt about that. And you could, you could go further and say that they are too cutthroat. Or some people have, I mean, we've been reading it. They're unethical in the way that they, they do business. But what I've been saying on Facebook for days now is, look, guys, this is 2017, and the, the, the reality is that this kind of business practice has been going on for a while now. It hasn't been in your face, because when a cruise line decides they're not going to come back here, people don't really talk about it that much, you know? We've lost so much cruise traffic here for similar reasons but nobody's talking about that um you know when when a cruise ship when the cruise ships came to antigua well, actually let's step further back when i went to the cartagena cruise ship convention and i and 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 the and the cruise lines are saying oh you know we, we we i went to a conference and they were talking about how they choose certain destinations and why they avoid certain destinations and they were saying look when we tell you there's a problem and you don't fix it we stop coming there you know, it's up to you to change, up to you to fix it. If you don't fix it, we're just going to stop coming. So I asked the question, which got me into huge trouble. I asked the question, I said, look, but you guys are saying that we have certain problems in Antigua over and over and over again, and we're not fixing them. I said, you know, is it a good idea maybe you come to Antigua and try and help us, you know, spread the word amongst our people instead of just telling a few executives that, you know, you need to fix these problems. Come to Antigua and tell us what the problems are and let us hear about trying to fix them. You know, Fifteen minutes later, I got attacked by, the, by, by two Antigua representatives for saying that. Needless to say, two years later, the, the major cruise lines came to Antigua and sat down at Perry Bay and had a conference explaining and spelling out in black and white what our problems were, talking about things like the cost of 
of tours and cost of excursions and saying that, you know, Antigua's, the price of, of, of excursions in Antigua is more expensive than all the other islands in the Caribbean because of these issues to do with transportation. And then they, they spelled it out. They said, look, we will choose destinations over Antigua because of the costs. And you guys are not dealing with the costs. So, you know, obviously we're not going to be investing into Antigua as a destination. They said these things. And, you know, Acid Michael, I think, took on some of these uh, uh, um, some of these things and has been trying to fix them. And that's great, you know. I mean, we, we, the cruise side of things has, has definitely, I think, has, has, has improved in recent years. Well, recently. But we still have transportation problems and, and issues with cost of transportation. And let's face it, a cruise ship is not going to come to Antigua unless the price of excursions is competitive with other destinations. So anyway, cruise ships do it all the time. And for some reason, there's not the huge, big fuss and fight when cruise ships decide not going to come here and they go to St. Kitts instead or, you know, put, another, put, put, put the ship into uh, St. Martin instead of coming here. I mean, I don't know why, but we don't talk enough about that. Rob Barrett has over and over and over again... Rob Barrett, for those of you who don't know, I mean, a lot of people watching this probably don't know who Rob Barrett is. Rob Barrett is, is the boss man in charge of Elite Island Resorts. They market and, and sell five resorts here in Antigua. St. James Club, Galley Bay, uh, Veranda, Pineapple, and Jolly Beach currently. And he owns several of those hotels outright. And, you know, he says time and time again, look, Antigua's cost, the cost of doing business in Antigua is above many of our competitors. And so flying somebody from England and putting them up at a hotel here in Antigua is way, way, way more expensive than flying them to Cancun and putting them up in a comparable hotel or, or to Dominican Republic or even some of our close neighbors. You know, it's very expensive to build a hotel and to operate that hotel and keep that hotel afloat here in Antigua. And we know this. We've known this for a long time. And one of the reasons that we've seen sugarcane cutting islands all of a sudden become competitors is because they, their cost of doing business in some of these places is less than Antigua. So we've been hearing this from hoteliers like Rob Barrett. Rob Barrett did a great presentation. You should go and look at it. If you look on ABS TV's Facebook page, you will find the interview with Rob Barrett. And it was an excellent excellent interview where he says, look, utility costs, higher here than anywhere else. You know, and he spelled it out. But the thing is, Rob Barrett lives in Antigua. He lives here. He has his family living here. He walks among his employees every day here in Antigua. He loves Antigua. He has an emotional attachment to Antigua. So yes, he's building another property and he's making a profit here, I, I imagine. But could he make more money investing that chunk of change he's investing right now in his hotels elsewhere. Yeah, he probably could make more money in St. Lucia or he'd make more money you know, elsewhere. But he's doing it here because he has an emo emotional attachment to Antigua, I believe. And he loves the people. He loves Antigua. And he rightly, and sure he should. We are, we, are, we are an awesome set of people. But Butch Stewart and Adam Stewart and, 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 the, and the Sandals gang, they don't live here. And, you know, they're operating a hotel two hotels under the Sandals Grand and they're looking at they're looking at it from a different perspective and I think in 2017 when there's so much competition in the Caribbean but the Caribbean competition is just one little tiny part of the whole the whole um, pie you know we're talking about our competitors are not just in Antigua our competitors are outside of the Caribbean region you know so when, when, when we're not, unfortunately, we're not hearing the side of the story. We're not hearing much from, from Sandals Resorts. And we're not hearing much at the moment from, from the government, apart from lots of spin from, from some of the people. But, you know, there's more to this story. And I think before we, you know, jump to the conclusion that Sandals is bluffing and Sandals is, is, is being spiteful and, you know, Sandals is not going to close down. Yeah, you know what? They, they, they very much likely are going to close down. And yesterday I posted a quote from one of their, from one of their people saying, yeah, you know what, Eli? They are going to close down. They've done it before. 
And all y'all people who are saying, look, they're not going to close down, you know, let's get real. They are likely to close down. They're likely to close down for a long time. And they've done it before. And this is nothing extraordinary in terms of regional um, operations. And, um, you know, let's look at why they're doing it. Um, you know, there's a lot of talk about concessions. We need to reevaluate re concessions for hotels um, and big hotels. Remember, Sandals is not just um, a, a, a 15 room hotel. Sandals is a massive hotel that spends a huge amount of money in marketing. You turn on the TV, you see Sandals ads all the time. Sandals ads help people come to all kinds of hotels across Antigua. Just their commercials alone, promoting Antigua, promoting Antigua, helps people come to, to other hotels here. It's a big deal. And so, Sandals asking for concessions, you know, we can't be big and bad and say, look, Sandals, you know, we're not giving you any more con 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 concessions. I, I have, I've heard through the grapevine, because there's so much rumor uh, going around, that one of the things they've been asking for, I think, I think the Prime Minister mentioned something in one of his press releases, is he was asking for concessions on, duty-free concessions on food and drink, um, which are going to be sold in the hotel. So what's the dollar figure on duty for food and drink sold in sandals per month? You compare that to the overall injection into our economy per month that Sandals contributes through all their vendors. I mean, yesterday you, you, you saw in the papers, you know, dry cleaning companies and other companies talking about my company. There's so many companies that actually are working with Sandals. Landscaping companies, flower delivery companies. I mean, you name it. There's so many companies that are working with Sandals. And so if he's saying, look, man, I, I'm having a real hard time operating and if, you know, I need to get these concessions, I don't know, like, we need to reevaluate the way we operate our hotel industry here. I mean, I mentioned on an on, on, on Observer Facebook thread that something about Yida. Now, Yida, let's just not use the word Yida anymore, because it seems like there are some very hypersensitive political appointees and other people who, when you use the word Yida, they start immediately attacking you. So let's just say, when company X is given um, concessions before breaking ground in Antigua and Barbuda that make all the concessions that Rob Barrett has look like peanuts, and make all the concessions that, 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 that the Sandals group look like peanuts, you kind of have to say, well, okay, I can see why they want more concessions. Um, again, tourism is not the same as it was in the 80s. You know, and we're seeing mega yacht marinas sprout up in places that we never thought mega yacht marinas would come in. We thought Antigua was the best place in the world for, for yachting. All of a sudden, we're, we're struggling to, to, to maintain market share in, in the yachting industry. We thought that sugarcane growing, banana growing islands neighbors of ours were just, pff, those are farmers, they can't compete without tourism. And all of a sudden they have better ports than us and they have, you know, rapidly expanding tourism plants. Guys, we need to carefully look at our product and figure it out because we have and serious problems that have been there over and over again, we're refusing to deal with. I mean, look, just imagine you fly in and you're going to go and stay at a five-star resort. And you dr somebody listening to this, I challenge you to drive in your car from the airport to Hermitage Hotel. You drive that road there and you ask yourself, how would you feel if you are spending that kind of money? The roads are atrocious. The road going down to Hermitage Hotel, boss, I can't even make it down there. You know what I mean? Like, you have five-star resorts, huge multi-million dollar developments at Perns Point, and the, play, the roads going on there, like, like World War III happened on them, you know? We have problems with, with, with taxi rates. We're not, we, we, don't, we don't have transportation services here like we do in many of the other islands, which is what the cruise ships keep on talking about. There's a difference between transportation and taxi. 
For some reason, Antigua doesn't see that difference. You know, there's so many issues. Our utility costs here are so much more than everywhere else. We don't want to talk about that issue. You know, so many problems here. We'd rather ignore those problems and cuss Butch Stewart and Adam Stewart. Those guys are masters trying to... Nah, those guys are businessmen. Like, like, like the number 45 says. It's nothing personal. It's just business. And they, don't, they can close their business just like I can close my business, like you can close your business tomorrow. Nobody can tell you to stay, keep your business open. You pay everybody off. You do everything you're supposed to do. Pay your taxes and close down. And I think we have to come to the conclusion that... Tourism is different than it was even, even, even five years ago. It's different now than it was five years ago. You know, after Brexit, after the, re- the madness hysteria with Zika virus, you know, um, the uncertainty I- 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 with, with, with the U.S. administration, there's so many problems that are making, you know, putting people in hotel rooms here more difficult. And I think that when Rob Barrett, highlights some of those issues and then all of a sudden one of the issues he just mentions not because he wants to pay his people less he's just saying look this is a reality he, he mentions one of the many things he says was was the cost of labor and of course everybody latches onto that they don't hear the cost of utilities the millions of dollars a month paid in utilities they hear oh the cost of labor what antigua's oh you want us to pay less no 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 rob's not saying he wants to pay his people less he's just saying look when a new investor is, is thinking about building a hotel in the caribbean they have to look at all the costs. And if they see that the cost of labor in St. Lucia is less than the cost of labor here, and the cost of, of utilities is less in St. Lucia than, than it is here, and transportation is easier and roads are better, what do you think that, 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 that they're going to do? Are they going to they're gonna build here or are they going to build in St. Lucia? You know, we have to stop sort of cussing the messenger. And I'm glad that Gaston Brown, and I hope that he's going to follow through with what he said. I'm glad he's... He's taking a measured response and, and saying, look, we're going we're gonna to work this out. Hopefully, he tells the rest of his ministers and, 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 and people to ease back on, 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 all the, um, on all the rhetoric. Because some of the stuff I'm seeing, man, is just madness, you know? We need to all calm down. Let's hear some good public relations from, from the Sandals group about what it is their problems. Put it on the table. Butch and Adam, put it on the table. You know, tell the people what are the problems. What, what, what do you want to see differently here in Antigua? And, and then, you know, we can evaluate it and we can figure it out as a people. But just, I think we need to, 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 to stop being so knee-jerk reaction. This is a horrible thing. I mean, like I said on the Observer, I'm going to lay off my staff. I'm going to lay off staff, no doubt about it. You know, there's so many businesses. Airlift is going to be affected into Antigua. Somebody was, somebody, uh, was saying the other day that they'd be surprised if JetBlue can keep flying into Antigua. Um, all the airlines are going, to, are going to take a big hit. They're not going to come flying into Antigua half full. They're going to cut back on their flights. So, and that's going to affect all the other hotels. The restaurants are going to be affected. Yes, it's an all-inclusive hotel, but... People do go out of that hotel and eat at restaurants. Um, there's, there's so many things that are going to be affected. It's not just the poor people who are going to be fired and paid off. You know, there's, this whole economy is going to be affected, and this is a big deal. And why I think that we need to take it seriously is I don't think this is the last of this kind of thing we're going to see. When Sunwing comes here, Sunwing will be even more powerful than... than they may be even more powerful than the Elite Island Group and Sandals. They're going to have their own flights. And so we need to learn to listen to these guys, listen to their requests for concessions, and also their complaints about, about other things that are going on here. And, and look, not just say, you know what, we don't need you. Go ahead, close down. If you feel it bad, close down. Nah, that's, that can't work, because they will close down. They will go somewhere else. Just look at the cruise ships. They've been doing it for a long time. Anyway... I'd just like to say that, um, you know, when people make comments like this, like I'm making right now, try not to attack me. You know, try, try and listen to what people are saying and try and hear them. You know, like, I think there's, a, there's so much animosity on this issue that I've been reading. And 
People are not hearing. I posted a comment last night on Petra Williams, the Economist's Facebook page. She was saying, "Oh, look, I'm, I'm, I, I've been doing some research, and you know, it looks like people are still able to book to come to Antigua in December. So that probably, the, I think my interpretation was." she was suggesting that this is a big bluff. And I, and I saw somebody else, quite a few other people on Facebook today, saying that Sandals is bluffing. And so I posted a quotation from one of Sandals' people saying, look, this is no bluff. That was immediately screenshotted and sent to Sandals' executives. Um, and now Sandals' executives are vexed with little Eli Fuller. On the other hand, Facebook's Observer Radio, Observer News um, page does something. And I write saying, listen, you know, we have to take this seriously and listen to the fact that these concessions are possibly a reasonable um, request. And, you know, when, when company X is getting these concession concessions and Sandals looks at these huge concessions this other company is getting and they say, well, you know, I want to get these concessions too. You know, this is, this, is, this is just reality. I say that, political appointee starts attacking me. Let's, let's, let's all be free to, to have opinions and talk about this thing without, like, attacking each other. Like, this is a huge blow for Antigua and Barbuda. A huge blow for Antigua and Barbuda. And, you know, we need to fix it. And not just fix the sandal situation. We need to fix the situation for the next businessman or developer who comes with the same type of reaction. Because this will happen again and again and again. Trust me, it's going to happen again and again and again. We are, more, we are a more competitive industry than we've ever been, and a more fickle industry than we've ever been in. Tourism is, is a threatened species in the Caribbean. And, you know, like in environmentalism, if a species is threatened, it needs to be protected you need to find out what the problems are threatening that issue and threatening that species and try and f deal with them. Here, we, it's, like, it's like we're not trying to fix the problems. Anyway, that's my point of view.